Well, hi, welcome to my latest video. Well, this video is going to be part two of adding SATA ports to your PC motherboard. Last time I used a PCIe X4 IO card to add extra six ports. Well, I'm going to add six ports again, but this time we're not going to use a PCIe slot. We're going to use an M.2 slot, or at least a slot that normally would have an M.2 SSD, NVMe type, right? Well, most people don't realize, but a M.2 slot is an X4 slot and has four pathways directly to the CPU. So I would expect that it should work at least as well as that PCIe card that we put in there, assuming the motherboard recognizes it, which I believe it will. I have my ASUS 570 Pro on this test bench with a 3900 CPU on it, AM4. Put this in, we should be able to recognize it from the BIOS and then of course Windows as well. And that would mean that any operating system that runs in the system should see it as well. What I'll do this time, which I accidentally left out last time, is I'm going to run Crystal Disk Mark on the ports that I add and make sure that they're running at the speed that I expect them to run at, which is six gigabits per second. Okay. I'm actually going to put the M.2 in with the PCIe card, which is already on this test bench. And we'll see. I expect it probably will add 12 more SATA ports to it. Now, I don't need that many, but I would like to do it just for illustrating purposes that you can add additional ports. So let's go ahead and uh, get this set up and test it. But before that, I wanted to show you this uh, SATA data cable. This is one of my white ones that I actually have in that system back there. It's actually nylon covered. So there are many different colors out there. I was doing a search on uh, on various websites today, including Amazon, and they have different colors, including multicolor ones like this that have a nylon cover on it. And you clearly can't tell the difference. It's nice and smooth. It, I like it better because it actually is easier to bend and you don't remember the bends as well, which is great. But I'm going to put up some pictures of some of the ones that I found out there, including one that's like orange, uh, light blue, there's a purple, um, and a couple of others. So I'll put them up here so you can see what they look like. Now, why would somebody want to use different color SATA data cables? As I said last time, it doesn't make any difference as far as the transfer of information. They all are seven pin cables, right? However, let's say you have a mix in your system of SSDs and hard drives, and you want to be able to easily identify them uh, on the motherboard itself. Well, you can use two different color cables. Black and red are the most common, but there's a lot of blues out there as well. If you really want to get fancy and maybe you want to identify different size SSDs based upon the color, well, you can define your own color code for that and go ahead and use whatever cable you want of a different color that's available. So I think the there's probably about seven different colors out there. I've displayed a few here just now and in that last video. So I just wanted to catch everybody up on that before I went on with this test. Anyway, let's get started and see how it works out, okay? Okay, here's my test bench. The first thing I need to do is take out the video card or I'll never get, to, I'm gonna use that M2 slot down in there. I won't be able to get to it unless I take the video card out first. Unlatch it. There we go. I'll just put it along the side here. I won't completely disconnect it right now. Anyway, here's the M2 slot. It's an 80 millimeter one. What I do highly suggest, because you don't want to bend it by pushing it in, because there's no uh, cushion underneath it, and I don't want to bend that board too much, okay? I've got the two drives already installed. Well, at least the cable. The cable that goes at this end, at the PC end. You probably could get away with not installing the drive itself at the other end, but I have it all connected already. And now I'm gonna put this in its place. A little hard to see. Let me uh, get a flashlight in there to help me. There we go. Gotta be careful with the M2s. There we go, I got it in. It's now slightly bent up, just like it was an M2 drive, right? Let me put the screw in. I have a magnetic screwdriver here. You don't wanna, you don't wanna lose those screws. The device actually came with an extra screw for the M2 and a little screwdriver, but I'm not using that. And there we go, just get it in there. 
and now we're should be good. I'll go ahead and I'll put the video card back in. Extra light never hurts. There we go. And it's in. Let me just uh, secure it over here at the top so it doesn't easily knock loose. Okay, and the drives are already attached. I got a total of four drives here. Okay, I have two of them connected to the original PCI card over here. And I have two that are connected up to the M M2 controller for SATA, okay? So at this point, I just have to uh, power it on and uh, we'll see what it looks like. Okay, I have the power supply on, I connected up the monitor. So now I'll turn this on. I'm gonna jump into the BIOS first. There we go, I heard the beeps. I see all those lights came on, the LEDs on the M2 SATA controller. Okay, it tells me to go into uh, BIOS by hitting F1. And there we are. Now if you take a look at the center third of the screen, about the top third of that, the top half of that actually, you see all of the AHCI drives listed. Um, that shows two of them are connected to M2 underscore one, that's one of the 256 and a 480. And then we have the other one to the PCIe times 16 under two. So the second 16 bit PCIe slot, and that has the same thing connected to it. So all four drives are seen. And if I go and exit this, I should be able to see windows come up. So let me try that. Heard the beep. Okay, just waiting for the little window circle. And there it is. So Windows is coming up with both controllers in it. Let's see what they look like once we get them in. I do label all of my SSDs, so we should be able to easy, easily identify which is which. Okay, logging in. And we're in Windows. Let's take a look at the drives. We got a total of four blank drives out there right now. Two of them are 256 gig and two of them are 480. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run Crystal Disk Mark and we're gonna see if, if, they can, if both controllers will work together or simultaneously that is. Let me run Crystal Disk Mark. Sixty-four bit. Say okay. Okay, that's one. I'm going to open up four of them, one for each drive, and we're going to do it simultaneously. Got all four open. Let me line them up here. I'm going to have each one try a different drive. So I'm going to do this first one as drive D. This next one as drive E. This next one as drive F. And the last one's already set to drive G. So what I'll do is I'll try to kick them off in rapid succession so that they're running simultaneously. If you look at what we have going on here, we got lights blinking down on the M2 controller and there's also two little lights on the side here blinking on the PCI controller. So four drives are simultaneously going, two on each of these. They're definitely running at six gig, that's for sure. That's the normal type of speed you see there in the 550 range for a uh, two and a half inch SSD. It looks like the, uh, in both cases, the 256 is running slightly faster. Now those are uh, T-Force as I recall, Vulcan, yeah, Vulcan T-Force drives. And the 480s are Patriot. They call them Patriot Elite 480 gig. They matched up pretty well. The 256 on each of the controllers. They're lined almost exactly the same in speed. The same thing holds true for the 480s. So it doesn't really matter which controller they're on. They're running at the maximum speed that those drives can handle at this point. You'll see four blinking lights. The blues that are on the PCI one both are still blinking. Oh, it looks like it does that when it switches from one test to the next. So now they're doing writes. Well, the write speed is a bit faster on one of the 256s. The other three look like they match, whether they're 480s or 256. They're pretty close. Well, now both green lights have turned off. I guess those tests have completed. The blues are still going though. Actually, just one blue, it looks like. The other blue is just solid on. It blinks when it's accessing and it stays solid on for the PCIe controller, whereas the green ones on the M2 go out completely when they're inactive. Okay, so that test uh, worked pretty good. Uh, I think this is the only limit to the drives I'm gonna do. I don't wanna put another 
power connector on here in order to drive more drives. And I never like to split power if I don't have to for the uh, SATA power connectors. So I think that completes what I wanted to do today. And uh, you'll see the links down below for this M2 one that I bought and another one that I saw as well. You can take a look at it. They both look very similar. One is more of a name brand than the other though. Mine is the one without a name brand. Thanks for watching. Take care.